whereas the Great Highland bagpipes have a fairly consistent continuous history. The uh, small pipes disappeared in the 1830s uh, within one generation. And it was only in the 1970s where an old set of 19th century McDougals was found in a museum and, and made functional again and had bellows added. Then the commercial development of the small pipes or border pipes or lowland pipes and the several flavors of them started. The conical bore of the real pipes or border pipes is a brighter uh, sound one octave higher and one octave lower is the quieter straight board small pipes. The recent nature of the small pipes has brought really a lot of interesting Celtic country folk bluegrass musicians to the genre not following the normal Highland bagpipes band route. There really aren't any competitions. Their repertoires are fairly informal. They doesn't have the traditions and rules of a conventional Highland bagpipe. So the music tends to be more stylistic and interpretive. When you see it written, you'll see a lack of embellishments and grace notes. And you'll see many different varieties of the same tune, same music, same and often quite different lyrics. It's very social. It plays inside well uh, with fiddles and guitars and singers. And the extra E drone adds an interesting element to the sound, which I'll point out later, besides the conventional high A and low A drones. The small pipe doesn't have the broad four act octave range of the great Highland bagpipes. It tends to be a more limited sound range. And the low A on the chanter is the same as the bass drone, so it sort of disappears when you play the low A into the burls. Whereas the high A is quite bright, almost the opposite of great Highland pipes, which has that great big heavy burl. And the high A is often the thinnest uh, and quietest note on the chanter. So I'm going to be choosing some nice slow airs for the small piper to learn on and provide music along with it to follow. And then some of the joy of small pipes is that you can record yourself and play some lovely harmonies or if you can play with somebody else. And I'm going to have a couple examples of that. And at the end, again, one of the uh, real nice things about the bellows blown small pipes is that you can sing at the same time. It's a great pub instrument or a musical instrument with a group so you can accompany yourself. And I'll have a couple of uh, sweet tunes, hopefully some new ones that you haven't heard of before and would like to add to your repertoire. All relatively straightforward tunes for the beginning piper. So let's get right to it. The mouth blown small pipes are a little easier to start with. They're plastic, they're more stable, they're easy to travel because they're so compact. But this video is going to be about the bellows blown small pipes. I really have to mention the Dunning Kruger effect here. Basically, it says that the le less knowledge you have on something, the more dangerous you are because you think you're good at it. So, I did my video of one month in, and that was all interesting. Then, I've spent six months really getting to this point here and making another video. And I must admit that even though I know a bit more, my confidence is down because I realize how difficult this all is. But I guess I'm on the curve, and there's no fighting Dunning Kruger. So, here we go. I've been very lucky in the last few months to have attended small pipe workshops with the great Gary West. You might have heard him on BBC's Pipeline. He's a superb uh, historian as well as small piper and uh, a great a teacher as well. Da, 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 uh, and no, also the it, fantastically da, da, entertaining da, 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 and da, da, deeply knowledgeable da, da, Fred Morrison, da, da, who da, da, not only is a small da, da, piper, but he's an alien da, piper, da, da, a bag da, piper, da, da, a low D whistle player, and just about anything that you can think of. Uh, they brought a lot of wisdom and a lot of the information and a lot of the music that uh, you're going to be seeing here uh, are selections that they included in their workshops. So um, thank you for those fellows and I'll have a couple of links to some of their pieces that they've done uh, in the bottom notes. Now one thing I will be doing with this music, which is a little unusual, is I will for the most part only be playing the first part without a repeat and the second part without a repeat. In some cases, those two parts uh, repeats are different uh, if it's referring to a change of note structure or something like that. I might include it or I might not. But in this, to, to save time here, this video is gonna go on for some time and I want to show you as much music as possible. Um, I'll let you do the repeats. And you can look at the music, you can pause the video. I've got the music up there posted in front of you so you can just play along on your own. I've played the tune so you know what it sounds like. And uh, please excuse me, but I will skip the repeats in these cases here. I know, big piping violation, but hey, small pipes, no rules. It's whatever you want to do. Interesting thing too about small pipes. A lot of small pipers now are coming into the, the instrument straight 
into the instrument, like with no musical background, they're not from the history of Highland piping or anything like that. It's really an instrument on its in its own right, uh, which is great fun, and and maybe that's uh, part of the casualness of it all. That's one of the reasons why people aren't kind of you know quite so hidebound by all the uh, rigorousness of following those strict piping rules. So this first tune, Hector the Hero, is about a highly decorated Scottish general who was caught up in his day of a conspiracy theory, which somebody was trying to impugn his good name and uh, accused him uh, through a slander campaign of things that he probably was not uh, party to. And he eventually ended up killing himself. It's a very sad story of a very great person uh, and persecuted by other people. The version I'm playing here is by Anne Gray, a great uh, piper from uh, Canada. And uh, I think it's on her CD, um, Shouting of Magpies, I think is the name of it. You'll often hear this played at funerals. It's a very slow, beautiful piece. Uh, well, it sounds great on the Great Highland Bagpipes. Some pieces of music sound great on big pipes, and you can go back and forth between the small pipes and the big pipes. And some, they sound better on the small pipes. And so uh, I'll point that out as we get along here. But um, let's get right into Act to the hero. Plays. Uh, it's also known as the river is wide, the water is wide, it has a bunch of different names. It's not a very long piece, but uh, I think you'll probably recognize it. It's a great one to have in your repertoire. People often request it uh, both at funerals, at weddings, at special events, uh, at memorial occasions. It just has something deep and, and grand about it that's reflective and very pretty. This next tune by the great songwriter Neil Dickey from uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's called The Haunting. And it has a slightly uh, minor key sound to it. Maybe that's the haunting nature of it. And because of that, I did this one again with my E drone on, and uh, I hope you like the sound of it. It's a very uh, slow lyrical passage, and it's not as well known as I think it should be because it's a really uh, different sound. One of those ones too that I think sounds better on small pipes than it does on big pipes. Sometimes the big pipes can be just less subtle and uh, not as sensitive to the, to the uh, style of this tune. Um, so this is The Haunting, Slow Bear. <laughs> Thank you. 
next to him called Mermaid Song or the Mermaid's Song or Mermaid Song. It is often played in Celtic groups um, in a very reflective kind of way with fiddles, accordions, guitars. Uh, it's a lovely group, Celtic tune. I mess around with it quite a bit here, um, different versions. There are different versions that go up to a high note and to a low note in the second time through. I try that here. You might notice that it doesn't exactly look like the music as the way it's written because I am trying a couple of different things as I'm going through it. But it's a very sweet lyrical tune. Interesting fact, I practice my, my great pipes down by the ocean here uh, in British Columbia. And um, often the seals will come up and the seals will come up and listen to me for several minutes sometimes. I think the sound is very interesting and it goes right through the water. So I feel it's very appropriate when they come up and they listen to the mermaid song. This is on small pipes. Dark Island, sometimes called Dark Isle, it is a relatively recent uh, piping tune. I think it was written in the 1950s or 60s for a uh, BBC television show. It might have been a, a movie on BBC. Anyway, it was. Uh, it's been very popular, and it's another one that, on the repeat in the second part, often there's a couple of note changes that you may or may not hear played. It's a uh, very powerful tune, though, beautifully written and uh, is a great one to practice your long held notes on. or a misty covered mountains and it goes by a whole bunch of other names as well if you uh, ever s listen to it on a soundtrack you're like why is that not called this um, it has many names it's a beautiful piece there's some beautiful words uh, Gaelic words that go along with it it kind of became famous at uh, President John F Kennedy's funeral it was played uh, as his casket was brought into the into the cemetery for, for lowering it's that kind of powerful music of the returning of home and, and the mist covered mountains. Well, beautifully done piece. It's a beautiful piece on, on Great Highland bagpipes, of course, and sometimes there's harmonies with it as well. We're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. But um, on its own, it's a lovely piece, piece to play in the evening as the sun's going down and you bring this out slowly. It's just, it's almost Hebrock style. It's just a lovely, slow air. Hope you enjoy.
So you probably noticed that the slow errors are getting a bit less slow as we go through this video. Uh, they are. I'm picking up the, the pace a little bit and making them a little bit, a little, they're a little bit more complex than they were at the start. This particular one here, the burning of the Piper's Hut, the landowners getting rid of the squatting Pipers in Scotland back then, uh, is a little, it's not, it's a slow air, but it's also, it moves through a bunch of notes in sequence fairly quickly. Again, in that minor sounding setting, starting with a B, and uh, I put the E drone on for this one too. You'll hear that kind of crispness in there, which makes for a sweet sound. The back half of this tune is actually relatively fast. It, it starts slow and then it picks up. Because this kind of video is about the uh, slow airs, I will, I'll just kind of give you a little taste of it at the end here, but I won't be playing it too much. It, the music is up. If you feel like uh, challenging yourself and playing it, go right ahead. There are, again, a couple of different ways of playing it and changing the endings on it. But uh, on its own, just the first half of it is a wonderful finger exercise and uh, a beautiful, sweet sounding tune as well. some much more complicated tune but again still very much paced and slow this one Mary Bag Og it, or in Gaelic or in English uh, Fair Young Mary is a very sweet tune this is one I think sounds far better on small pipes than it does on the uh, Great Highland Bag pipes it's a nice one to learn as a uh, either competition piece or as a presentation piece when you're in a group and you want to show off your uh, small pipe chops it's uh, very impressive because it doesn't repeat and it goes through and it's a fairly lengthy tune for small pipes um, so let's go through this far here, uh, playing some of the pretty uh, complicated tunes that are going on in there. So we're going to try something a little bit different now. One of the nice things about small pipes is being able to record yourself or play with somebody else 
and play harmonies. Often when you're in uh, harmonies with the Great Highland Pipes, they're pretty loud and you need a lot of other pipers playing melody uh, and it's often difficult to record yourself. You have to wear headphones to hear the, how the melody goes. And anyway, it sounds great, but it, it's much more complicated. Whereas with the small pipes, it's pretty easy just to put your phone out, record it, or if you're in front of your uh, computer or you're playing with somebody else, great fun. So Chin Min Toman is uh, also known, I think, as Mackenzie's Lament. Um, it's also called the English translation as I can see the helix. Very straightforward tune, very pretty, and uh, sounds great with harmonies. Harmonies are the music that generally on the repeat of the first part uh, breaks into a harmonic or a third, up or down, some things are called seconds, and uh, they are a great way of making music much more interesting and melodic. Uh, in some pieces of music there's thirds and fourths. You'll often hear that in Amazing Grace or some of the other uh, more traditional music that's very slow. It makes a slow air really come to life when you've got these harmonies in there. So let's give uh, Chin Min Tuman a go. challenges with harmonies is playing exactly on the beat with the other uh, instruments. It's, I talked about, you know, when you're being stylistic and you're doing your own thing and all that kind of thing, but when you're in harmonies, it's a little bit less uh, free form and you kind of try to be on the beat. And you'll see that when I missed being on the beat in my recorded version there, it's pretty evident and doesn't sound all that great. Now, sometimes there's also not just a uh, our harmonic note, but there's a counter rhythmic note in there, and it and maybe one or two notes of different beats, different paces, resolving at the end uh, makes it all very, very interesting. So, the next one we're going to try here is a beautiful Welsh folk tune, it has wonderful words that go with it, Swigan, and it's again a fairly straightforward tune, which is a great one to practice harmonies on because of the difficulty of landing it exactly on the beat. But uh, I'm going to give it a go. next one, we're starting to increase the complexity of the notes a little bit here and the rhythm. Chatil Mathruman, or McCrimmon Will Never Return, is actually a, quite a sad song. There's so many sad songs in Scottish music. Uh, this one is of uh, McCrimmon going to fight with Prince Charlie and of the entire group that left to, to, to fight alongside him. McCrimmon was the only one that died. And uh, uh, on his return of his body and finding out about his death, his sister wrote this tune uh, a long time ago. 
it's a beautiful piece, and the seconds or the harmonies on it are 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 quite strong and and pretty. Anne Gray does a lovely recording of this on her uh, Ch Chugging Up Magpies CD, which I, I couldn't find a link to it on YouTube in terms of showing what that sounds like. So hopefully uh, you can look, look it up on Amazon Music or Apple or something like that and, and hear a beautiful Great Highland Pipes recording of The Criminal Will Never Return. But in the meantime, here's the music and you can try it for yourself. And now, really one of the beauties of having a bellows pipe instrument is the fact that you can accompany yourself singing. Or uh, if you smoke, or if you need a drink, or a beer, or you're chatting with somebody, or whatever, you can do all these things at the same time, which is pretty cool. So we're going to do some uh, simple tunes coming up here with lyrics. And I'm going to include the lyrics on here with the music so that you can sing along. The first one is She Moved Through the Fair. It's a very old tune, and there's a number, again, of... of um, lyrics to it that are different depending on the, the singer and the uh, setting that it's in. But for the most part they reflect the same thing, that a young couple who are, wanted to get married, the, the, da the woman's uh, parents, the mother agreed, the father didn't like, he didn't feel that the son was, or the, the, the groom was suitable for the, the daughter. And uh, it goes on. And, they never do get together, it's unresolved, and he dreams at the end that she comes in and lies with him. But um, it's a very sweet tune, and it's pretty straightforward uh, uh, to play. And again, in that kind of minor key, using the E drone, and you'll see me doing a little bit of a kind of a vibrato tap on the high E there. It kind of adds a sort of funky, alien sort of style to it, which uh, sounds great. And then we'll get right into the lyrics and hopefully you can sing along. But uh, if this is your first time singing along with yourself on pipes, it's really a lot of fun.
said to me, my mother won't mind, and me father won't fight you, for your lack of kind. Then she stepped away from me. This she did say Will not be long love Till her Alright, hopefully you didn't get too sad from that uh, pair that never were destined to be. Uh, this next song, that song has words, a tune has just notes. Uh, it's Wild Mountain Time. Again, it goes by a lot of different names, when you go, last you go, um, things like that. Uh, originally an Irish folk tune, it's been now scanned by many, many singers, folk singers, but they've mixed up some of their own words in it, and it's, it's a beautiful piece of music. And it's one that's often requested by groups. Uh, it's very easy for other people to join in and sing along to. So it's a nice one to learn because it has a number of verses which allows people to kind of get up to speed on, on the sound of it all. So uh, without further ado, let's get into Wild Mountain Time. And what would any pipe music be without Skyboat Song? Skyboat Song, probably one of the most recognizable, familiar, and very accessible piece of music to people who aren't familiar with uh, the overall piping idiom. In this particular case, we're going to go for it all. We're going to put the tune in. We're going to put in seconds. We're going to put in lyrics. We're going to put in many people singing this one together here. It does sound like a bit of a, a pub fest, but that's the idea. It's the, it's the nature of this being a fun and accessible instrument, which I'm hoping that we've kind of come to this level here through the video and shared all this together. So uh, I'll be saying goodbye at the end of this particular tune here. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for suffering through with this with me. I'm, again, six months into this, got lots to learn myself. But I hope it's been a bit inspirational for you and you get to try some of the music out and enjoy it along with me. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>